provision of quality hospice and palliative care reaffirms the Denver Hospice's belief in the essential dignity of every person, regardless of age, health, or social status, and that human life deserves to be treated with the utmost respect and care, and... Good job, sorry. <laughs> with the expertise and dedication of our staff, and the ongoing support of our community. We have provided hospice and palliative care since 1978. That's 38 years. And along that way, we have cared for over 70,000 patients and families. And in fact, we average over about 800 families and patients per day. That you, and I'm filled with gratitude, that you are here, and I see such a range of ages, young people, and even much, much younger people. <laughs> and as we attend into our own bodies and to this reaction to, to what there is, I want to tell you that as medical director, and I've been medical director at the Denver Hospice since March of this year, and prior to that, involved in as medical director in hospice care for a year and prior to that associate medical director of the Rocky Mountain Senior Care that I've seen a whole range of experience in hospice care and end-of-life care and the Denver Hospice is spectacular and I could not be more honored to be a part of it. My colleagues and my patients and um, the nurses and the teams that I work with call me the patient whisperer, and it's because the most important thing to me is love. It's connection, because I know that connection heals. And in my work, I've come up with this, this metaphor for explaining hospice, that this country's national treasures are the national forests, the national parks, and hospice. Hey, hey what's going on? Don't all of you know what just happened to me in there? Isn't everybody supposed to come running up to me and say, we heard the news, we're so sad. No more frisbee, no more bicycles, no more blue skies. The whole world will turn gray because we've got a death sentence. And he waited for that to happen. But it didn't happen. Because the world cannot cater to one individual. And so on the steps of that building, my old professor made a very profound decision. He can either go this way, be angry, bitter, why me, all the rest of his day. Or he could go this way, try to find something positive in this terribly negative hand that he had been dealt. And because he'd always been more positive than negative, and because he was a teacher, he chose to be able to look at it, probably won't even be in the room with you, it'll be in some bank garage, or summer house, in that final moment of life when we are hanging on, the only thing that matters is that the people you love are there with you and you're able to let them know how you feel about them and then you. If in that final moment of life that is all that matters, then what makes you think that in all the other moments of life, that's not what matters to you. 100% right and they are. 100% wrong. You say you're wrong if it'll end it. Because when you get to where I am, and you will get to where I am, you won't care who was right or wrong. All you'll care is that they're there. You can tell them how you feel. You can tell them what you want. <coughs> Forgive everybody. And then he said, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself, I said. For all the times you beat yourself up. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't as talented as my sister. I wasn't as gifted as my friends. I didn't make enough money. I wasn't this. I did this wrong. Forgive yourself. Because when you get to the end, you're going to wish you would have been nicer to yourself. <clears throat> When in doubt, 
as to how to spend your time on this earth. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. It will never be too soon. I thank you for the good work you're doing, and I thank you so much for inviting me to talk to you. Very good.